Welcome to our video on chemical equilibrium. We'll be looking at chemical equilibrium and the equilibrium constant Kc. It's a number that we use to tell us if the equilibrium mixture favors products or reactants. Let's first consider the general case before looking at examples and calculations to find the equilibrium constant. Let's consider a general case of a reversible reaction. When equilibrium's been established, the concentrations of A, B, C and D are constant as time passes. We use square brackets for concentration. Under a given set of conditions, such as constant temperature, the concentrations of the reactants and products are linked by the expression Kc is equal to the concentration of product C raised to the power of the coefficient. We do the same for product D concentration. We divide all of this by the concentration of reactants A and B, both raised to the power of their coefficient. This looks a bit strange at first, but it becomes easy when we look at the first example. For equilibrium concentration expression, we only include substances whose concentration can be changed. Gas and aqueous solutions of substances are included, and liquids and solids are not included in the expression. Let's look at the equation from the industrial process called the contact process where sulfuric acid is produced. All the substances are gaseous, so they'll all be part of the Kc expression. To write the Kc expression, we start with 1. Is the equation balanced? 2. The products raised to the power by the number in front of the chemical substance. 3. The reactants in the denominator raised to the power by the number in front of the chemical substance. Note, if there's more than one product, the substances are multiplied by each other. Therefore, Kc is equal to the concentration of sulfur trioxide squared divided by the concentration of sulfur dioxide squared multiplied by the concentration of oxygen. The production of ammonia goes by the industrial process called the Haber process. This is given by the equation here. when nitrogen and hydrogen gas react together to form ammonia. The equilibrium constant expression is given by Kc is equal to the concentration of ammonia squared divided by the concentration of nitrogen and multiplied by the concentration of hydrogen cubed. In the next example, we have a redox reaction with a bit of a difference. Copper solid metal reacts with silver ions. The products here are copper 2 plus ions and silver metal. Here the solids are excluded as we cannot change their concentration. We only look at the aqueous ions. The Kc expression is given by the concentration of the copper 2 plus ion divided by the concentration of the silver plus ion. Let's look at one more example before looking at how to calculate the equilibrium constant. Given the following equation, where water reacts with carbon to make hydrogen gas and carbon monoxide gas. Here we need to be careful as carbon is a solid and is thus not part of the Kc expression. 
The KC expression is given by the concentration of hydrogen multiplied by the concentration of carbon monoxide divided by the concentration of water vapour. In order to calculate the equilibrium constant, we need to find the concentrations of the reactants and products at equilibrium. We need to know two things in order to calculate the numeric value of the equilibrium constant. One, the balanced equation for the reaction system, including the physical states of each species. From this, the equilibrium expression for calculating Kc is derived. Two, the equilibrium concentrations of each species that occurs in the equilibrium expression or enough information to determine them. These values are substituted into the equilibrium expression and the value of the equilibrium constant is then calculated. The units of Kc depend on the reactant and the products involved and are not constant, and in saying this, we leave the unit out. The only factor that influences the equilibrium constant is temperature. This is super important. When the equilibrium shifts because of temperature, the Kc value will change. A higher value Kc means that the forward reaction is favoured and the equilibrium lies to the right. In order to solve equilibrium problems, we need to be able to calculate the concentration of each substance at equilibrium. We use the equation concentration C is equal to the number of moles N over the volume in decimeters cubed. Let's apply the steps discussed to a given problem. Calculate the value of the equilibrium constant Kc for the system shown. If 0 0.1908 moles of CO2 0 0.0908 moles of H2, 0 0.0092 moles of CO, and 0 0.0092 moles of H2O vapour were present in a 2 decimeter cubed reaction vessel, and they were present at equilibrium. Extracting the information given, we need to show what we have, including step one, write the equilibrium expression for the reaction system, products on top and reactants on the bottom. Step two, since Kc is being determined, check to see if the equilibrium amounts are expressed in mole per decimeter cubed. In this example, they're not. Conversion of each, therefore, is required. Using the equation C is equal to N over V, we can calculate the concentrations at equilibrium. Dividing the hydrogen by 2 gives 0 0.0454 mole per decimeters cubed. Carbon monoxide comes to 0 0.0046 and water to 0.0046 moles per decimeter cubed. Step three, substitute each concentration into the equilibrium expression and calculate the value of the equilibrium constant. If the equilibrium mole concentrations are not given, we need to calculate the moles at equilibrium and then calculate the concentration at equilibrium. Let's look at another example. Initially, a mixture of 0 0.1 moles per decimeters cubed of NO 
0.05 moles per decimeter cubed of hydrogen and 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed of water were allowed to reach equilibrium in an empty container. At equilibrium, the concentration of NO was found to be 0.062 moles per decimeters cubed. Determine the value of the equilibrium constant Kc for the reaction. Step 1. Write the equilibrium expression for the reaction. Step 2. Check to see if the amounts are expressed in moles per decimeters cubed. In this case, we need to calculate the concentrations at equilibrium. A simple table can be used. We need to know the number of moles of substance that was initially in the reaction vessel, what was consumed, and what's left at equilibrium. The table is sometimes referred to as ICE, Initial Consumed Equilibrium, or RICE, which stands for Ratio, Initial, Consumed, and Equilibrium. Let's apply this to the problem. Step 3. Create a table that shows the initial concentration, the change in concentration, and the equilibrium concentration for each species in the reaction. From the chart, you can determine the changes in the concentrations of each species and the equilibrium concentrations. From the example, start with the following information. The change in concentration of the NO was negative 0.038 moles per decimeter cubed. Now because all the reactions take place in the same container, the other chemicals will change in the same concentration ratio. The negative sign indicates a decreasing concentration, not a negative concentration. The changes in the other species must agree with the stoichiometry dictated by the balance equation. The hydrogen will also change by minus 0 0.038 moles per decimeter cubed, while the nitrogen will increase by plus 0 0.019 moles per decimeter cubed, and the water will increase by plus 0 0.38 moles per decimeters cubed. From these changes, we can complete the chart to find the equilibrium concentrations for each species. Step 4. Substitute the equilibrium concentrations into the equilibrium expression and solve for Kc. This is a very high value and means that the reaction condition and temperature favor the products. Let's summarize the basic steps to do the calculation. Write the balanced equation. Write the equilibrium constant expression. Write the initial concentrations of each species. Show the change in concentrations using x if you have an unknown. Solve for x. Calculate the equilibrium concentrations.
There are more complex versions of these calculations, but we'll leave that for another video.